Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the web seminar Doing Business in Indonesia and Ecuador, an event organized by the Embassy of the Republic of Indonesia in Ecuador, as well as the Embassy of Ecuador in Indonesia on the occasion of celebrating their 40 years of diplomatic relations. Indonesia considers Ecuador as one of its strategic trade partners in Latin America and a very important one for bilateral relations in terms of commerce, while Ecuador views Ecuador as a potential partner with whom it can build a strong cooperation ties between Latin American and the ASEAN countries, open opportunities towards a broader participation in the economic field and encourage South-South cooperation. For today's seminar, we're honored to count with the presence of the Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia to Ecuador, Her Excellency Dinariati Chokro Suprihatono, as well as the Ambassador of the Republic of Ecuador to Indonesia, His Excellency, Mr. Fabian Valdivieso. Likewise, I would like to introduce our four speakers for today's panel of discussion. From the Ecuadorian side, our heartfelt gratitude goes to the Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce of Quito, Mr. Carlos Aldumide. A warm welcome for Mrs. Maria Fernanda Cruz, Director of the Department of Asia, Africa, and Oceania of the Ministry of Commerce, Production, Foreign Trade, Investment, and Fisheries of Ecuador. From Indonesia, our deepest acknowledgement and gratitude to our counterparts, Mr. Diono Nujadin, Head of the Permanent Committee for the Americas and International Economic Institutions of the Indonesian Chamber of Commerce and Industry as well as Mrs. Ni Made Ayu Martini, Director of the Bilateral Negotiations of the Ministry of Trade of Indonesia. Thank you all for being part of today's event as the main speakers on our discussion panel, which is meant to boost trade and investment and strengthen the commercial relations between Ecuador and Indonesia. I would like to thank the presence of the Ministries of Foreign of Ecuador and Indonesia, who always support our activities and bilateral events. To all members of Ecuadorian and Indonesian companies, partners, chambers of commerce from different cities and potential investors that are gathered virtually today, we hope that this seminar will become a crucial step in increasing bilateral trade and investment in order to create a better business environment for both our countries. In order to start this event, I now have the honor to request the presence of the Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia to Ecuador, Her Excellency Dinariati Chokro Suprihatono, for her opening remarks. Welcome, Ambassador. Thank you, Maria, for introducing all of us. Okay, good evening in Quito and good morning in Jakarta. Ex Excellency Mr. Fabian Radivieso, Ambassador of Republic of Ecuador to the Republic of Indonesia. Also for Her Excellency Ambassador Laura Donoso, Under Secretary of Africa, Asia and Oceania, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Human Mobility of Ecuador. And here I see also Ambassador Bolivar Torres. How are you, Ambassador? Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you. For me, it's a pleasure to, to uh, to be with here, all of you tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And also to uh, Bapak Darianto Harsono, I hope the Director of American Affairs to Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Republic of Indonesia. Dan Pak Darianto Adaya. And to Bapak Diono Nurjadin, Head of the Permanent Committee for the Americas and International Economic Institution of the Indonesian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Good evening. Oh, good morning. And Mr. Carlos Zaldumbi, the Executive Director of Chamber of Commerce of Quito. Ibu Made Ayo Martini, Director of Bilateral Negotiations of the Ministry of Trade of Indonesia. Good morning, good evening. And Mrs. Maria Fernanda Cruz, Director of Asia, Africa, and Oceania of the Minister of Production foreign trade, investment, and fisheries of Ecuador. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, thank you very much for joining with us today. It gives me a great pleasure to welcome all of you to this web seminar titled, Doing Business in Indonesia and Ecuador. 
jointly organized by the Embassy of Republic of Indonesia in Quito and the Embassy of the Republic of Ecuador in Jakarta on the occasion of commemorating 40 years of diplomatic relationship between Indonesia and Ecuador. I am pleased to see the representative of Indonesia and Ecuador are present here today, which coming from government, yes, chamber of commerce and companies from different sectors. I'm looking forward to have a rich discussions and a fruitful exchange of views about the topic all you are going to have today. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia and Ecuador diplomatic relation has opened on the 29th of April, 1980. It means this year marks the 40 years of the opening of Indonesia and Ecuador diplomatic relations. As we mark the anniversary of 40 years of the opening of our diplomatic relations, this is the momentum for us to make a reflection and find a way to strengthen our bilateral relationship in the years to come. In these past few years, the bilateral relation between two countries has been going really well and even growing. I believe this is also supported by the respective embassies, both in Jakarta and in Quito. Throughout the years, the exchange of visit between two officials has been growing, especially from Indonesia. Through those visits, several initiatives and commitment has been built that leads us to the flop of several cooperation in the fields of trade, defense, mining, hydrocarbon, agriculture, disaster management, housing, telecommunication, education, and many more. Before the pandemic of COVID-19, I am also very pleased to observe that people-to-people -people contact between the two countries have increased, whether in terms of social culture and tourism. More Indonesian tourists visit Ecuador and more Ecuadorian tourists visit Indonesia. In terms of trade, we have an increasing trade in economic relations. According to the data of the Central Bureau of Statistics in Indonesia, the total trade between Indonesia and Ecuador in 2019 is 203.8 US dollar million. More and more, we can see parts of each other in our respective countries. In Indonesia, we really love Ecuadorian roses, coffee, and chocolate. In Ecuador, you also have some of Indonesian products like automotive, paper, as well as fashion and beauty products such as footwear, clothes, and false eyelashes. In 2019, we successfully facilitate the opening of one of Indonesian restaurants in Quito. We will have one more Indonesian restaurant at the end of this year in Quito. Further, now we are trying to facilitate the opening of Indonesian spa and beauty place in Quito, as we have one of the best spas in the world. Further, according to our market intelligence, Indonesian products such as gastronomy, cosmetics, clothes and textile, herbal medicines, palm oil, tire, robusta coffee, motorcycles, sports equipment, handicraft, furniture, agriculture equipment, construction materials, spare parts for art wrap and Indonesian film are very potential to be marketed in Ecuador. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in December 2018, the first meeting of the Working Group on Trade and Investment of Indonesia and Ecuador has held in Quito, Ecuador. The delegation of the Republic of Indonesia was chaired by the Director of Bilateral Negotiations of the Ministry of Trade of Indonesia, Ibu Made Ayu Martini. For its part, the delegation of Republic of Ecuador was chaired by the Director of Asia, Africa, and Oceania, Oceania from the Ministry of Foreign Trade and Investment of Ecuador, Mrs. Maria Fernanda Cruz. And today, we are so honored to have both of them as our speakers. In the first meeting of the Working Group on Trade and Investment, Indonesia and Ecuador have shared their bilateral trade view and notes that 
and that is an immense potential for enhancement of bilateral trade and investment. Both countries also agreed to take actions to boost their bilateral relations in order to promote a growing and balanced trade. Further, both countries also agreed to put their best interest to organize the second meeting of the Working Group on Trade and Investment in Indonesia. In this regard, the Indonesian Embassy in Quito always supports and encourages to make this important meeting happen. With this meeting, both governments will be looking to expand the trade relationship and resolving matters relating to bilateral trade and investment. On this occasion, I also would like to inform the Ecuadorian business representative about the plan of Indonesian foreign ministry to set up the Indonesian, Latin American, and the Caribbean Chamber of Commerce, with whom it can be a great advantage to build a bridge of cooperation between Indonesia and Latin American countries, including Ecuador. I believe that by founding this Chamber of Commerce will encourage the business sectors from both countries to join hand in hand in developing ways on how to deepen economic relations in potential areas such as trade, industry, ag agriculture, mining, oil and gas. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, although the relations of our two countries has been really good throughout the years, I believe it has not reached its true potential. I believe one of the problems is because we don't know about each other. Or what we used to say in Indonesia, tak kenal, maka tak sayang. You can't love if you don't know. In this regard, by collaboration with Ecuadorian Embassy in Jakarta, Indonesian Embassy in Quito is also honored to present this web seminar to all of you, of course, to know more and explore every potential of two countries, especially in trade and investment. That's why we would like to extend our gratitude and appreciation to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Republic of Indonesia and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Human Mobility of Ecuador for their supporting of this event. My gratitude also goes to our prominent speakers today, namely Mr. Carlos Aldumbide, Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce of Quito, as it has been one of our most important partners in Ecuador. My heartfelt gratitude also goes to the Ministry of Production, Foreign Trade, Investment, and Fisheries of Ecuador, Mrs. Maria Fernanda Cruz, Director of Asia, Africa, and Oceania of the Ministry, who always gives us all the, the support we need. My deepest gratitude to Bapak Diono Nurjadin, Head of Permanent Committee for the Americas and International Economic Institution of the Indonesian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, as well as to my dear friend, Ibu Made Ayu Martini, Director of Bilateral Negotiations of the Ministry of Trade of Indonesia. Thank you, Bapak dan Ibu, for your presence today. Finally, let us use this important web seminar to have rich discussions and fruitful exchange to fuse about doing business in Indonesia and Ecuador. And for all my dear friends who are present today, tonight, or this morning, welcome and have a good time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ambassador. I now have the pleasure to ask Ambassador of the Republic of Ecuador to the Republic of Indonesia, His Excellency, Mr. Fabian Valdivieso, for his opening speech. Welcome, Ambassador. Thank you, Maria Fernanda. Uh, good evening uh, in Ecuador, good morning in, in Jakarta. Uh, Her Excellency, uh, dear friends, ambassadors, uh, mi querido Bolívar, un gusto verte aquí en esta sesión. Uh, Padre Arianto, thank you very much for, uh, for uh, uh, being here. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, uh, dear friends, 
It's a great pleasure to welcome you to this virtual seminar that has been jointly organized by the embassies of Ecuador in, in Jakarta and Indonesia in Quito to discover business and commercial possibilities, which will allow us to look deeper into some of the opportunities of collaboration between both countries. This idea was suggested by Ambassador Dini and I automatically accept this great, uh, with great enthusiasm. Ecuador is located in the western corner at the top of, the, of South America. Ecuador is a melting pot of a native uh, American communities, including people of Spanish and other European or Middle East origins, as well as the de descendants of Africa people. It won independence from Spain on in the early 19th century, its capital, Quito, still has some of the best preserved early colonial Spanish buildings in the, on the continent. Traditionally, a farming country, Ecuador, con, Ecuador's economy was transformed after the, the 1960s by the increase of in, industry and the discovery of oil. There was rapid growth and progress in health, education, and construction. Between uh, uh, 2006 and 2014, the GDP growth averaged 4.3%, driven by high oil prices and substantial external financing. During uh, that period, uh, poverty declined from 37.6% uh, to 22.5%. Uh, However, these achievements are threatened uh, by the falling of oil prices and the COVID-19 pandemic has had a strong negative impact on the economy. During this difficult period, Ecuador faces the challenge of building the necessary consensus to adapt its economy structure to the new international context, return to the path of sust sustainable growth with enlarged public sector participation and pro uh, protects uh, key social advance. The country is systematically improving the investment climate to promoting increased private sector invest investment in facilitating capital and, mo and labor mobility of emerging economy activities. Let me introduce our uh, first speakers. Uh, uh, they are from the Chamber of Commerce of Indonesia, Kadim. Mr. Diono Nujadin and Mr. Mufti Hamka Hassan. Padiono is one of Indonesia's leading businessmen. Uh, he got this master's degree from Pace University in New York and currently is the president and CEO of PT Cardin International, as well as vice chairman of, of uh, PT Jasa and Casa Semesta, which is Indonesia's leading ground uh, and cargo handler. Pamuti, who is the deputy head of permanent committee for Middle East of Kadin, is an international business consultant with 35 years of experience and also the founder and CEO of PT Hati International and International Business Strategy Solutions Consultancy Firm. Both uh, Pardiono and Pamuti will address the subject of halal certification in Indonesia a topic that is quite important, not only for the Ecuadorian companies, but for all my fellow ambassadors and diplomats that are joining this virtual meeting. Then we have Ibu uh, Nimade Ayu Martini uh, as our third speaker, who is currently the director of bilateral trade negotiation from the Ministry of Trade of Indonesia. She holds a Master of Science uh, from the London School of Economics in the UK, she was also Indonesia's trade attaché in Washington, D.C. And since uh, uh, 2017, has concluded various bilateral trade negotiations. Ibumade uh, will do a presentation regarding Indonesia-Ecuador bilateral relations and updates. Thank you, my friends. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. We are now ready to start with a panel of discussion by our speakers. Each one of you will have 15 minutes for your presentation. The idea of this panel of discussion is to look for opportunities and boost investment between Ecuador and Indonesia with the aim of increasing interaction between potential sectors and industries, 
thus allowing mutual benefit for the trading partners of both countries. I would like to remind our viewers that once our panel of discussion is finished, we will proceed with a question and answer section. In the meantime, on the Zoom chat, please write down your name, institution, and the question which might be directed to any of our speakers or be a general one. For now, I have the pleasure to invite Mr. Diono Nurjadin, head of the Permanent Committee for America and International Economic Institutions of the Indonesian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, Your Excellency, Ibu Dinyati Chokro Subhidrahato, Ambassador of Indonesia to Ecuador. Your Excellency, Mr. Fabian Falfi de Feso, Ambassador of Ecuador to Indonesia. Uh, my esteemed colleague, Mr. Carlos Saldum Pide, Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce of Quito. Mrs. Maria Fernandez Cruz, Director of Asia, Africa, Oceania, Ministry of Production, Foreign Trade, Investment, and Fisheries of Ecuador, and Ibu Madiayu Martini, Director of Bilateral Negotiation, Ministry, Ministry of Trade of Indonesia. Thank you very much for giving me the time this morning to present briefly about some of the opportunities between uh, Indonesia and Ecuador. Uh, and uh, my colleague from the Chamber of Commerce, who is uh, on the Committee of uh, Middle East countries, Pak Mufti Hamka, will also present about the halal regulations and up to updated uh, process of how to obtain the halal certification in Indonesia. So perhaps I'll just start uh, briefly, um, very quickly with some background information on uh, Indonesia, as you all know. Indonesia is the largest archipelago country in the world um, with the fourth largest population, uh, 267 million people, more than 17,000 islands uh, with a coastline of 80,000 kilometers. So uh, this very large um, coastline, long coastline, as well as most of the islands, uh, most of the country being islands uh, and sea, uh, presents uh, a very interesting and many business opportunities um, with regards to fisheries and other uh, sea or um, produce uh, related um, pro uh, products uh, from Indonesia. Um, in terms of the e economy, Indonesia is now 16th largest in the world with a little bit over a trillion dollar uh, economy. It has one of the most stable uh, GDP growth rates. In fact, one of the lowest uh, standard deviations in terms of GDP, as I will show in the next chart. It has a, a reasonably uh, low debt uh, level. And um, what is uh, also very attractive is that 60% of this very large population is in the uh, productive and working age, uh, thereby um, presenting a, a very sizable uh, market of 500 billion um, and a very healthy US dollar, 126 billion foreign exchange uh, reserve. So if we move to the next slide, you can see uh, what I just mentioned in terms of the growth uh, of Indonesia has been very, very consistent uh, the last few years um, at uh, generally 5% uh, with uh, low inflation uh, at around 3% and relatively um, low interest rate also. And as I mentioned, a low level uh, of debt. So the trade balance actually has become slightly um, towards a deficit um, uh, in the last few years, but uh, we see the government is, is working very hard to promote uh, exports. So this, this should be corrected uh, over the next uh, few years in terms of becoming uh, back to a surplus. If we look at the investment, uh, what has happened in investment in the last year, um, we can see that Indonesia has attracted uh, quite a sizable uh, amount of investment. Um, if you look on the chart on the right, uh, you see that most of the investment is actually coming to still to Java. So that there presents uh, many opportunities for investments in the outer uh, regions outside of Java 
although Java is the main population base uh, and the main industrial base today, uh, but we believe that there are many opportunities outside of uh, Java because the growth is becoming more widespread. Um, and uh, if you see the types of investments, um, it's been mostly in the traditional uh, electricity, gas, and water supply and transportation infrastructure related. Um, but we believe we see that there is additional uh, new interests in other sectors, such as service sectors, uh, tourism, uh, and even the IT um, and some of the tech sectors are getting um, and receiving quite a lot of interest um, from investors. If we look more deeply into what we say, what we call the demographic um, bonus, this is, has to do with the fact that uh, what I mentioned, uh, the majority of the population of Indonesia is in the productive age. In fact, um, less, uh, more than 60% or approximately 60% of the population is below the age of 29 years old. And so this presents a, a very sizable opportunity um, for growth and for productivity going forward. So this is one of the reasons that Indonesia presents itself as a very attractive uh, investment destination with a sizable uh, domestic uh, consumer market that is growing. In terms of the ease of doing business, Indonesia has uh, been steadily uh, improving in the ranking. If you see on the next slide, um, uh, climbing from uh, in 2014, 120 to now 73, and, and the government has been very, very um, firm in terms of revising uh, the investment process and providing the necessary incentives to promote more investment and ease of doing business uh, in Indonesia. And uh, how is that seen? If you see on the next slide, so there's a very, very strong commitment to reform in the government from institutional uh, reform, creating institutions that, that are applying good governance and very adaptive to change. Uh, there's regulatory reform. Um, there's a omnibus law that's being uh, discussed right now and process uh, that will provide um, uh, regulations to foster innovation uh, and growth as well as competition. And there's fiscal reform, um, which is uh, providing more effective and efficient uh, management of the fiscal policies of Indonesia. So there's a, uh, the government uh, is very, very committed uh, to reform and making uh, business uh, more competitive uh, in Indonesia. As part of this commitment, Indonesia has also formulated a uh, what we call the Indonesia 4.0 uh, roadmap um, and the, with the goal of Indonesia uh, becoming a top 10 global economy by 2030, um, boosting uh, exports, uh, as I mentioned before, doubling the productivity cost ratio, so increasing productivity and devoting a significant amount of uh, uh, capital to research and development, which is equivalent to about 2% uh, of uh, GDP. So um, th this, this is all in, in line with making Indonesia uh, more competitive and attractive uh, to, uh, to investment. In terms of the focus of the 4.0 roadmap, uh, we can see here that uh, the focus is on five uh, industries or five sectors, uh, which has traditionally been uh, strong in Indonesia, but we want to make it uh, much more uh, competitive, which is the food and beverage, textile and apparel, automotive, electronics, uh, and chemical. So these are these are uh, sectors which present uh, very, very uh, interesting uh, opportunities for business uh, and investment uh, going forward. So um, more specifically on the overview of trade um, between Ecuador uh, and Indonesia, if we see on this slide, we see there's been a general growth in terms of uh, trade for the last few years um, from um, 2017 to 2019. And even if we look at the first five months of 2020, we see that that growth is continuing. Um, however, there is a, a, we are running a, 
uh, trade deficit um, with Ecuador. So there's um, opportunities here uh, uh, from both sides uh, in, in, in light of the um, uh, deficit. So there, there are opportunities to increase uh, trade and bring the trade more uh, balanced between the, the two countries. And specifically, we look at the types of products uh, that are being uh, traded between the two countries. Uh, we see the top five ex uh, Indonesia's exports to Ecuador in 2019 um, being uh, ve vehicles um, and then uh, paper and paper and other uh, similar uh, products. Um, and then interestingly enough, um, the, imp the imports are uh, cocoa uh, being the largest and, and tobacco. So I think this shows a very interesting uh, picture of the current state of trade between the two countries and presents um, uh, more opportunities uh, going forward uh, to develop the trade between the two countries. And more specifically, I think I would like to hand over to Pamufti to talk uh, more specifically about uh, the halal regulations because it is uh, quite critical to be able to comply uh, with this process um, when importing uh, products uh, into Indonesia. So I'll hand it over to um, Pak Mufti. Thank you very much, Pak uh, Diono. Uh, good evening to all uh, excellencies in, uh, in Latin America. And of course, uh, good morning to all uh, my friends in Jakarta, especially the ambassadors, and also to Bumade from the Ministry of Trade. OK, very briefly. Uh, if you talk about the halal certification, I would like to just uh, explain that we are now having a new law on halal certification. Uh, uh, the slides here are actually flow charts. Uh, I don't know if you can uh, just go ahead yeah, to there, the. Yeah, there is a new slide if yeah. we can. Yeah. Uh, but you know, have prepared also uh, regarding about the flowchart and the process of halal certification, which is very good. But then I'm not going to go into the details. I'm just going to explain regarding about the new policies related to the halal law, which should be very interesting for all the Latin American countries. Okay, while yeah. Padron is uh, going to the slide, preparing for the slide, I'll explain. There is a new law in Indonesia that called the halal law, which is not new. It was passed, but, but the legislation was passed in 2014, uh, law number 33. And the, it took four years for the government to set up the regulations for this law, six years, I would say. Okay, And last year, in October, uh, the government regulations was uh, uh, signed by the president for the implementation of the new law. Basically, uh, in the past, the halal certification is issued by LPPOM MUI, MUI, the Majlis Ulama of Indonesia. They have what you call a separate entity called LPPOM MUI, the uh, Food and Drug uh, Laboratorium to test the halal of a particular product. And in the past, the MUI is the one who does the auditing the examination, the, the whole checking of the process for production and so on, and MOE issues the halal certificate. Under the new law, uh, there is still a role of MOE. Uh, MOE will still issue what we call the endorsement, the fatwa, we call it in, the, in Muslim religion, we call it fatwa, which actually states whether the product is halal or not. But the certification is issued by a special body that's been set up by the government under the jurisdiction of the Ministry for Religious Affairs, which is called BPJH, the agency that oversees the issue of certification. This agency also has the responsibility to supervise all the auditing bodies because under the new law, not only MOE is the one who has a monopoly of these auditing bodies, other institutions can also do that. For example, if let's say in Ecuador, you have a auditing company or a institution that wants to collaborate with, let's say an Indonesian institution to establish an audit or examination company enterprise, you can do that. So it can be done by any independent auditing examination company. 
we call it LPH, Lembaga Penjaminan Halal. Now, they are the ones who will do all the auditing, the testing, the process of the application and so on. After that, they will report to the MOE for the fatwa. For the fatwa, declaring that this is halal. It's a declaration of whether the product is halal or not. The one who issues this fatwa is MOE, the Majlis Ulama Indonesia. Bear in mind that MOE is not a government institution. It, is, it was established under what we call the NGO law, non-governmental organization, or you call it ORMAS, Peraturan or Undang-Undang ORMAS in Indonesia. And they report to the Ministry of uh, Religious Affairs that a particular product is halal, according to the fatwa. Then only the BPJH will issue this, what you call halal certification. Now, having said that, I would like to also inform you the market of food and beverage in Indonesia, which the slide, of course, is not being presented here, but we, you will get it. Uh, can, I my... yeah, okay. can I share okay. my screen? Yeah, okay. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Share yourself. This, this uh, is the process. This is good. This, the process okay. is there, BPJI and all that. So you see, uh, with guts of our documents, these are all the requirements very quickly. Uh, the HALA certificate education, uh, Padiono has already elaborated very nicely in a nice diagram here. Uh, I want to add in, apart from this process, that there is a big potential and we are actually trying to see if we can be the halal hub for food products in Indonesia, food and beverage products, because we are having a big population and there's been a lot of call from all our cooperating countries that Indonesia should take a leading role in that. And perhaps that you'd like to know that uh, Kadin is working very closely with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to prepare a halal summit next year and you'll be getting more information from the ministries regarding about this particular event, and hopefully that all the Latin American companies, countries can also participate in this particular event. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mufti, for the explanation. So um, I will hand it back to the uh, host to uh, continue the presentation, but thank you very much for giving us the time to present. And before I, I leave, I would just like to um, mention that I have to excuse myself in about half an hour because I have to attend another meeting. But uh, but Mufti um, will be will stay to answer uh, any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Trimakasi Padiono. Indonesia, the largest archipelago in the world, has more than seventeen thousand islands and a population of two hundred sixty-seven million people. Indonesia's GDP, GDP is around, around 1,000 billion, billion dollars, dollars, ranking it 16th in the world. GDP growth is 5% per year. It has low infl inflation, low interest rate, and low level of debt, which makes it very interesting. 60% of the population is below 50 years old, which is also good for productivity, making it a very attractive destination for doing business. The largest investments made by Indonesia are related to the sectors of energy, electricity, gas, water, telecommunications, transport, mining, construction, food industry, hotels, and restaurants. Business facilities in Indonesia have improved from being in the 120th place to the 73rd place in the ranking of countries that attract more, more investors. Indonesia has generated a strong legal and regulatory commitments to facilitate investments with constitutional, regulatory and fiscal reforms. The Indonesian strategic plan includes the following ambitious objectives. Become the number 10 economy in the world, increase exports to, in to increase GDP up to 10%, double the productivity and invest 2% of GDP in research and development. Indonesia has identified five key sectors for its development, food, textiles, automotive, electronics and chemicals. These five sectors constitute 60% of the labor force, 60% of the GDP, and 60% of total exports. According to Indonesian figures, Ecuador's exports, like cacao, tobacco, machinery, flowers, exceed those of Indonesia, vehicles, paper, and rubber, in the trade balance between 70 and $80 million. The halal certificate required in Indonesia can be obtained in a few months according to the new law projected in the flowchart shown 
we wanted to import products to Indonesia under the market of food and beverages following all the requirements. All the steps to follow to obtain the certification is also detailed. Kadin Indonesia Business Service Desk is the international information center for new business opportunities in Indonesia. Next on the program, I have the pleasure to invite Mr. Carlos Saldombide, Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce of Quito for his presentation. Thank you, Maria, Maria Fernanda. Uh, good morning and good evening to everyone. Uh, Madam Ambassador Dini, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. For me, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Señor Fabián Valdivieso, Embajador de Ecuador para Indonesia. Eh, buenas noches en Ecuador, buenos días allá. Uh, my apologies to everyone. Uh, I, could, I can do my, my presentation in English, but I do feel more comfortable doing it in, in Spanish. So my apologies to the ones who, who, who speak in, in English. Um, so um, I don't know, uh, Maria Fernanda, maybe uh, Andres is going to, to, to put the presentation on. Yes, Thank exactly. You. Andres will help us with the um, presentation in English. Thank you. Sí, buenas noches, ¿cómo está? Yo le voy a ayudar con la traducción. Muchas gracias, Andrés. Muy amable. Vamos adelante, entonces. Pásale a la primera, porfa, Andrés. Eh, yo no tengo el control. Ok. Ok, listo. Bueno, dale, adelanta, porfa. Perfecto. Bueno, para entrar un poco en contexto, creo que es importante también hacer un poco de énfasis en la pre las presentaciones que se han hecho previamente, tomar en cuenta la cantidad de población que tiene Indonesia, uno de los países más poblados del mundo, con una economía bastante robusta, eh, ir creciendo al 5% promedio en los últimos 18 años es un mérito bastante interesante y algo que debería llamar la atención de todos los inversionistas, no solamente en este caso de Ecuador, sino del mundo. Andrés, tú me vas, tú me vas a... diciendo cómo nos vamos complementando ahí o... Sí, si usted, si usted desea, vamos eh, por partes... Y así voy explicando por partes lo que eh, usted va diciendo o si es que quiere decir directamente desde la presentación como usted desee. Sí, es, que, es que yo me guío un poco en la presentación y voy hablando como te diste cuenta. Entonces, si quieres, yo voy, me vas diciendo para hacer una pausa y tú vas traduciendo si es que quieres. Sí, ok. Cada, cada unos, unos, unos uh, dos o tres oraciones vamos parando. Ok. Bueno, entonces, eh, como decía, creo que eh, el contexto del comercio no solamente se tiene que enfocar en temas de, de balanza comercial, sino también en todos estos otros temas que ya hemos conversado y hemos escuchado en la, en la presentación anterior, puesto que tenemos un gran potencial en Indonesia al ser el, la economía más grande del sudeste asiático, para el Ecuador debería ser un atractivo importantísimo encontrar una gran cantidad de población con una economía robusta creciendo al 5% anual en los últimos, casi en las últimas dos décadas, fundamental para poder regresar a ver esta economía como importante para las exportaciones para el, del Ecuador. Ok, uh, so in, in the basic context, uh, there is a, a large interest uh, of commerce to, uh, to Ecuador, to Indonesia because uh, you can see the growth to, to Indonesia. So uh, Ecuador is uh, really interested in this uh, giant Asian country. So uh, we can also see the economic growth on the 5% that is uh, really strong for, for our Latin American countries. So uh, we are really, really uh, waiting for this ambit to happen. Bueno, en, en el cuadro podemos ver cómo se ha ido desarrollando el comercio exterior, las exportaciones de Ecuador en los últimos años y hemos visto que efectivamente hay un crecimiento en las exportaciones de Ecuador de un alrededor del 30% en los últimos tres años y esperamos que en este año, como se ve en la parte derecha de las barras, eh, tengamos un crecimiento de aproximadamente un 15% si se sigue la tendencia de enero a mayo 
que pese a los impactos del coronavirus, vemos que existe un crecimiento del 15%, lo cual nos hace pensar que podríamos llegar a finales del 2020 con un crecimiento cercano al 20%. No vamos a llegar a los índices de 30 o 33% que teníamos en años anteriores, sin embargo, vamos a tener un crecimiento importante igual. So, uh, as you can see on the charts on the left, there is the, the charts of, of oil and non-oil exports, and it's uh, basically on the 30% in three years, as you can see from 2016 to 2019. So the, the growth is around the, the 30%. Uh, as you can see on the right chart, uh, there is the products. And uh, there has been like 50% of the tendency of the growth of the, of the products. And uh, for 2020, we want to seek if, if we reach the 20%, uh, but we haven't uh, achieved that goal yet. Even though the, the coronavirus is affecting us on the, on the trade balance, we can have at least a 50% of, of increase in the, in the import exports, in this case in the exports, from uh, Ecuador to, the, to Indonesia. The main, uh, the main product uh, that, or products that, that we export to, the, to Indonesia, uh, as, we, as we already said in the, in the other presentations, cocoa and tobacco. Please. Uh, to the next one. Ok, aquí uh, lo que vamos a ver rápidamente es que las importaciones han tenido un decrecimiento de cerca del 8% de enero a mayo de 2019 al 2020 tuvimos un pico importante de crecimiento en las importaciones desde Indonesia hacia Ecuador en el año 2018, producto de un incremento importante de cerca del 200% en temas de vehículos, que la misma embajadora hace un momento nombró como uno de los principales productos de exportación de, de Indonesia. Y podemos ver también que eh, los principales productos que se exportan hacia el Ecuador son eh, bienes de, de consumo, como son los vehículos, y materias primas, como vemos en el cuadro también, por el tema de la pulpa de papel y cartón. So, uh, as we can see on the, on the, on the chart, uh, the imports have decreased the 8% on the 2019 and 2020. And the imports of 2018 has been increased on the on 200%, mainly by the vehicle industry, as the ambassador Ibudini said. And uh, and yes, that was the, the main product, like a pulp paper and cardboard, as you can see on the on the chart to, to your right. And of course, the, the most increased one was the motor vehicles, trailers, and semi-trailers. Uh, if you have any question, let us know on the chat also, please. Mm -hmm. Next, please. Okay, entonces, este es básicamente un resumen de lo que podemos tener de enero a mayo del 2020 en cuanto a exportaciones e importaciones. Ya lo vimos en los cuadros, esto básicamente lo resume. Para el caso del de Ecuador tenemos, eh, como se dijo también en presentaciones anteriores, un superávit a favor del Ecuador de cerca de 100 millones, si es que hablamos de año a año. En lo que vamos de enero a mayo tenemos un superávit de cerca de 40 millones eh, a favor del Ecuador. Vemos que el, comparado con enero a mayo del año anterior, si bien las exportaciones han tenido un incremento, las eh, eh, importaciones, en cambio, han tenido un decrecimiento relativamente importante. ¿Por qué? Por el tema de los vehículos. La economía en el Ecuador venía eh, ya estancada desde el año 2019. No hemos tenido mayores crecimientos en los últimos años en cuanto a la economía. El, la, el, la capacidad de consumo de los ecuatorianos ha disminuido y esto hace que un sector importante como el de la importación automotriz se vea afectado. Y aquí se ve reflejado en el cuadro. Okay, uh, as you can see on the chart, the, 
the, the capacity of consumption of the consumers has been decreased. And uh, so the, the, the imports are, are less. Yeah, for the exports, as you can see, the no, no oil. And, uh, and, and also the superavit has uh, increased from January to May in, in 40 millions. Right. Siguiente, por favor. Ok, en este cuadro, lo importante de ver en el cuadro es que si bien, por ejemplo, en el caso de productos como el cacao, tenemos actualmente una exportación de 80 millones de dólares por año, que son básicamente el 90 y un poco más por ciento de lo exportado total entre Ecuador e Indonesia, tenemos, según datos de la Cámara de Comercio y otras entidades que hemos hecho una proyección, un potencial importante de 53 millones. Por eso es que en el cuadro, en, el, eh, en, el, en, la, en la barra que dice eh, Export Potential, tenemos la posibilidad de llegar a 133 y no quedarnos en 80 millones. Lo que quiere decir es, este cuadro básicamente es hacernos ver todas las oportunidades de crecimiento de exportaciones de Ecuador hacia Indonesia. Ok, so uh, as you can see on the chart, Uh, there on the left is the, the products that Ecuador can uh, export. And on the, on, on the middle chart, you can see the potential of the exportations. And on top, a uh, potential is the projections that you can have on, uh, on the exportation. So the, the, the most uh, wished for it is the cocoa beans and then the fish or, or sell fish meat. Uh, So yeah, there is a lot of opportunities to uh, begin the, the, the exportation from Ecuador to Indonesia in this kind of products. Yeah, just, just to clear the information in the, in the column of export potentials, uh, actually we have 80 millions of, 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 uh, export, or of real exportations from uh, Ecuador to Indonesia, talking about cocoa beans, the, the potential is 53 million, so the export potential should be uh, 133 million. What we, can, what we want to, to, to project in this, in, this, in this chart is all the, the probabilities and all the opportunities that we have from Ecuador to Indonesia to increase our exports. Next, please. Okay, so here, here, here we can uh, see uh, like a line, uh, Uh, chart of um, how, how the relations in between Indonesia and Ecuador has been in the last, in the last uh, couple of years. So beginning in, 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 on June of 2012, the working group on cooperation in trade and investments is created between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ecuador and the Ministry of Commerce of the Republic of Indonesia in order to strengthen the relations in the economy and commercial sphere. Then, in December of 2018, Ecuador and Indonesia agreed to analyze the possibility of a future preference trade agreement. The, then, in January of 2019, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia, Redno Masuidi, Uh, during the accountability of, of, of her country's uh, foreign policy, highlighted the good level of diplomatic and economic relations with Ecuador. What we think here is that it is necessary to develop a long-term work plan for potential to potential the, the Ecuadorian-Indonesian uh, relations. En este punto, eh, te, te, quiero felicitar a la señora em, embajadora Dini, porque en los últimos años, eh, en conjunto también con el, el, el gran trabajo que ha hecho eh, el embajador Valdivieso, las relaciones entre los dos países se han fortalecido muchísimo, no solamente en temas de comercio, sino en temas culturales, educativos, en todos los aspectos que nos conllevan a tener un ecosistema de negocios que fortalezca la relación y haga crecer, a través de este fortalecimiento de la relación, haga crecer el intercambio comercial entre los dos países.
¿Quiere que le traduzca lo que dijo, tal vez? Bueno. Para que entienda la embajadora. Gracias, Andrés. Eh, eh, Ibudini, he wants to, to con, uh, congratulate you and all your effort for all your activities that you have done with, uh, with the both embassies of, of uh, Ecuador and also the embassy of Indonesia, not only for the commercial uh, purposes, uh, also for the cultural and the educational uh, things that the both embassies have done. So uh, he's very thankful for all the, all your hard work you have done. Thank you, next please. Thank you, Carlos, dear. Really appreciate it. Welcome, Madam Ambassador. Uh, next please. Okay. La potencialidad que tiene las inversiones en diferentes sectores en el Ecuador, como podemos ver en el cuadro, las inversiones privadas como en el sector público ascienden a 20 mil millones de dólares. So as you can see on the on the chart, the private and public in, uh, investments are uh, exceed exceeds the 20 million dollars. So uh, please continue. Okay, um, it's not 20 million, it's 20,000 million. And uh, the, 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 the really important uh, sectors here are, let's say, agricultural, industrial, and services from Ecuador to Indonesia. And also we need to make something really new and special to attract foreign investment to Ecuador in, in pri private sector, in these three, three sectors, but in, in the public sector, also in projects with the public services and, strateg and strategic, strategic ser sectors. Um, I've, uh, I've seen some of the Indonesian history and the economical his history, and I think that the PPPs from uh, the, uh, from uh, that that uh, Indonesia has made in the last in the last years, may may uh, may make uh, may be good for the economy in Indonesia. So here in Ecuador, we we should copy that. I think that that in in Ecuador we have huge opportunities to open the strategic sectors to to the private investments via these PPPs, this private uh, uh, public private uh, in in. Uh, Projects. So uh, I think that's, that we, we can not only talk about uh, just uh, import exports, we, we, we got to talk about a lot about investments in both countries, especially in, in, uh, in Ecuador from investors from Indonesia. Next, please. Okay, mira, aquí, aparte de abrir específicamente los sectores a la agroindustria y las industrias, creo que es importante recalcar que los dos mercados son complementarios. Uh, to, to a point this, it's very important that uh, we see the two markets that are very important, the agroindustry and the industries. In, industries. Yeah, and that we, we, we are two uh, complementary markets so so uh, we we have products that indonesia needs and we need a lot of products that indonesia has so we should uh, increase the the trade balance in between the two countries importante eh, andrés eh, comentarles que el ecosistema para hacer negocios es importantísimo que lo fortalezcamos disculpa puede repetir que se, se cortó que es importante hacer un, un recuento en este momento y hablar sobre que el ecosistema de hacer negocios entre los dos países se tiene que fortalecer. So it's very important to strength, uh, strengthen the two the ecosystems of the both countries uh, on these uh, topics of, uh, of industries. ¿Y por qué? 
Mira, hay, hay dos índices importantes que quiero recalcar ahora. La facilidad para hacer negocios, el doing business de Ecuador es de 130. De Indonesia es de 73. The, the doing business of, of Ecuador, le podría repetir, disculpa, no, se me está cortando la comunicación y le, te escucho. Déjame okay. un ratito, por favor. Déjame okay. cambiarme de lugar porque no me llega muy bien. So, uh, what I was saying is that, that the doing business index of Ecuador is 130. And the one from Indonesia is 73. So we should not only talk about trade balance and commerce, but we should talk about what the experience of Indonesia is to have increased its ranking from 2013 being ranked 128 to 2019 and 20 ranked 73. We should learn a lot from you So what I'm trying to say is that we, we, we don't only have to trade, we have to learn a lot from the Indonesian experience in this doing business index. And we do also have to learn a lot uh, from the competitiveness and the uh, networking dynamism that Indonesia has right now. They also had a very good index The Ecuadorian index in competitiveness is 90 and the Indonesian is 50. So we have to learn a lot from you. Um, Indonesia, Andrés, ¿me escuchas bien ahí? Sí, ahora sí, perdón, se estaba cortando. Vale. Indonesia da muchísimas facilidades, como dije hace un momento, para las alianzas público-privadas. Y también da muchísimas facilidades y mucho menos trabas que en el Ecuador para el desarrollo del sector privado. Ok, so Indonesia gives a, a lot more opportunities to, to get the alliance between the public and the private institutions. So that's a, a good thing that uh, the Ecuadorian government has to learn. Maybe Indonesia can teach us how they and make these partnerships and they, and they make this uh, easier going uh, business for the public and the private sectors. Correcto. Gracias. Siguiente, por favor. Next, please. Thank you. Siguiente. Next. Aquí es un breve resumen de lo que realmente se necesita para un inversionista extranjero venir a invertir en el Ecuador. ¿Y cuáles son esos beneficios los más importantes? Eh, logística y beneficios tributarios. Creo que en el Ecuador ya se viene trabajando en algo así y esperamos poder seguir trabajando como sector público y sector privado para atraer más inversión extranjera directa. So this is the, the main... Uh... The main uh, attraction that Ecuador has for investments. So one is the logistics, and the, so the second one is the, the the government taxes that we are go uh, working with. So you can see on the chart the 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 health and the infrastructure and the market size is uh, is much better than, for example, Chile, Peru, or Colombia. Perdón si me adelanté un poquito, pero es para complementar. Está bien, perfecto. Lo que está marcado en rojo en el cuadro habla de que nosotros como Ecuador tenemos eh, un puntaje deficiente en la parte, digamos, eh, de arriba, pero en la parte de abajo en temas de eh, tecnología, economía, institucionalidad, tenemos que seguir mejorando. Y, eso, y es ahí donde nosotros como Ecuador creo que podemos apalancarnos mucho en la experiencia que ha tenido Indonesia para poder llegar a tener una economía robusta que crezca más del 5% y que tenga un ranking positivo en, en todo lo que tiene que ver con competitividad, competitividad y facilidad para hacer negocios. So on the on the on the chart you can see on the red part of the chart that's the the main issues that Ecuador has to work with. Uh, so we can have like a positive rank Uh, in uh, like you can see ICT adaptation, the macroeconomy stability, the institutions. 
is the main uh, weakness that Ecuador has. But I think with the collaboration with the with the Indonesian governments and Indonesian uh, private institutions, we can you can help us work these these uh, issues that we have in our country. Thank you, Andres. Next, please. I think we are getting to the end. Yeah. So uh, mainly that that's the. Uh, what, what uh, we from the Chamber of Commerce have seen of the relation in between Indonesia and, and Ecuador. I think we have a lot of opportunities to increase our trade balance. I think we have a lot of opportunities to receive foreign investment from Indonesia. I think we have a lot of opportunities to introduce our products and processes from the agricultural thing uh, to, to Indonesia. Uh, as I said already, um, I think that the, that the mission of uh, um, Madame Ambassador Dini has been uh, very successful here in Ecuador. I hope that, uh, I, I, I wish that she could stay a lot of more years here in Ecuador because we are in the, in the, in the, correct, in the correct side. We are making a great job here. Um, and um, the work that we've been uh, making uh, together with, uh, with Ms. Ambassador is, is a very good job. So, um, Thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm very open to any questions that you in the audience have. Thank you very Gracias, much, Mr. Sir. Carlos. Um, the Quito Chamber of Commerce has just shown in figures a comparison of the trade balance between Ecuador and Indonesia, particularly between the first semesters of the year 2019 and 2020. From here, we can see that the Ecuadorian exports are greater than imports by 33 million US dollars and 44 million dollars respectively. However, imports have decreased in the year 2018 and 2019 due to the decrease of economic growth in Ecuador, especially in the automotive sectors which have been affected. The main products that Ecuador exports to Indonesia are cacao, tobacco, and flowers. On the other hand, the main products that Indonesia exports to Ecuador are paper pulp, vehicles, and spare parts. Ecuador has more products with high potential to be exported to Indonesia, in addition to tococoa, shrimp, animal food, and cane sugar. In 2018, Ecuador and Indonesia agreed to analyze the possibility of signing a future preferential trade agreement. In 2019, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia, Mrs. Retno Marsudi, during the accountability of her country's foreign policy, highlighted the good level of diplomatic and economic relationship with Ecuador. However, there's still a need to develop a work plan to enhance Ecuador and Indonesia commercial relations. Investors seek in Ecuador economic and legal stability, proximity to large markets, competent labor, proximity to ports and airports, as well as tax incentives in order to attract investment. The investment and export possibilities exceed $20,000 million. However, legal reforms and decisions are required to allow the private sector to participate in the development of projects, especially in strategic sectors and public service works. At this time, I would like to introduce Mrs. Ni Made Ayu Martini, Director of Bilateral Negotiations of the Ministry of Trade of Indonesia. Terima kasih ibu Ni Made. Okay. Uh, Terima kasih, Maria Fernanda. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias for uh, giving me the floor to speak. Uh, I am very thrilled to be here among friends, among uh, the country that I've been working on for the past years. And I'm very pleased with the enthusiasm, the initiative by both ambassador that I really admire. Ambassador Dini uh, and also Ambassador uh, Fabian, who's from time to time um, tirelessly um, working with me how to bring Indonesia and Ecuador bilateral trade relations. So I first of all would like to congratulate all of us for the 40th anniversary of our bilateral relationship. I think this is very exciting 40 is a good year to have, very dynamic still, and a lot we can do uh, to improve our partnership. Uh, this is why I said yes to Ambassador Dini when 
and Ambassador Fabian as well when they invited me to speak. Although today I have negotiation actually in the afternoon, but for me, this is a far more uh, also important uh, to be attended and share uh, some experience and hope with you. Um, I also would like to uh, thanks and welcome Bapa Diono. Uh, good to see you, Pa. Uh, pa Carlos, Mr. Carlos, um, very good presentation that you put up and, and uh, got me thinking a few things that I'd like to share later on. And of course, my counterpart, uh, Maria Fernanda, who's going to speak also after me. Uh, let me, uh, I make a presentation, but I believe uh, some of them are already been mentioned. I will skip those, but regardless, uh, this is still, uh, I would like you to have a look and feel free to have it uh, later on. Uh, can we uh, move to the first uh, slide, please? I don't want to sound pessimist because as a trade negotiator, you cannot be pessimist. You have to be optimist. But I'd like to bring uh, the whole, all of us, to see uh, the kind of world we are living in at the moment, uh, because it is very challenging. Uh, but of course, uh, as you all agree with me, I believe every um, every crisis there's always a silver lining, right? Uh, I'd like to, we'd like to see at the end of the tunnel, and I think we can do that. Um, uh, Ecuador and Indonesia can work together to overcome the challenges that we have. Um, I, I'd like to draw a little bit the challenges that Indonesia or the world I think has because they, because the impact of the trade war that currently happened, it is not, um, it is real, it is in front of us then and the, the effect, uh, the impact that we face uh, day to day now it's very imminent, uh, the slowing down of the economy. And now with coronavirus, even make it even worse and, and very challenging for us. Um, and then uh, also the rise of protectionism and populism, which I myself uh, face it because I take care of uh, almost all bilateral relationship that Indonesia has in terms of uh, trade. I see, you know, issue or comment or direction that never been on the table before. Now it becomes an issue, you know, how countries want to protect themselves, which is fine. But we have a WTO to, to as a reference for us if, if we have a problem. But regardless, uh, there are a lot of uh, measures that are introduced by countries that make it difficult for us as government official as um, a policymaker to deal with. And of course, lastly, to make the storm perfect is the uncertainty in multilateral trading system. Uh, as a trade people, I think here, uh, international relations, we are uh, witnessing now or, or uh, waiting uh, nervously the head of uh, DG for WTO because it is very critical for us uh, to bring back WTO into uh, 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 global global stage. But these are four challenges that we're facing. Now, what do we do? Probably that's the question, yeah? Next. Next, please. Uh, before that, oh, is it? No, before that, please, yeah. For Indonesia, uh, because of that back, backdrop uh, that we're facing, uh, two focus that Indonesia has at the moment. Economy, how to uh, improve the economy, the resilience, export and import, of course, because of uh, global slowdown at the moment, and, and health, only two, economy and health. How we can uh, make sure that the, um, uh, the, the, um, the COVID-19 effect can be mitigated because it is real. And then we, until a vaccine is uh, found and available uh, for all, we are safe. Otherwise we are not. And this unfortunately affected our situation, our economy, our business. And I think you all can testify about that. So that's why our president have a policy direction um, this, that apply to us, yeah, pre-crisis, uh, pre-COVID or during COVID and maybe in the future still, which is uh, increasing export and investment. Export means, of, co of course, import, in increased trade and investment. 
engage and, and explore non-traditional market. This is where, if you notice, uh, for the past four years, we are very active, engaging with almost all countries um, in the non-traditional market in many regions of the world to engage. You know, it doesn't have to be uh, through trade, trade uh, negotiation or trade agreement, but even uh, in engagement like Ambassador Dini uh, doing here with Ecuador, I mean, you can see. Uh, you know the the enthusiasm, the the, the spirit, the um, energy that we put on because we believe in investing in the relationship. This is what we do. And thirdly, because uh, our trade policy, uh, international trade policy, uh, heavy on trade agreement for the past five years, we want to conclude the pre preferential trade ag uh, agreement or SEPA, Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement or FTA, free trade agreement, that we are negotiating at the moment. Because, okay, starting it is one thing, negotiating is one thing, but concluding is far more important. This is why uh, our president from time to time push us, finish it because the world is so uncertain, we need to compete. So competitiveness is very important and that embodied in our policy. Next, please. So why why are we doing trade agreement? Yeah, because for us this is part of the strategy. I think uh, Bapa Carlos just now mentioned also uh, uh, a strategy to improve uh, 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 ease of doing business, right? Our ease of doing business. I, I will come to that later. Uh, secondly, we want to improve efficiency uh, and uh, the, 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 to have a to be a healthy economy. This is competitiveness come from. For us, doing trade agreement will help us to be competing, to be having a, a best practice, uh, international rules that make our economy competitive. Thirdly, um, uh, similar actually, uh, enhancing competitiveness, uh, one of them is, is of doing business or, or competitive rank and all. And that, that uh, at the, those elements are in the trade agreement, uh, and then uh, although it's not directly, but it helps us to, to achieve competitiveness. Uh, and then also, uh, this is actually part of our reform. Uh, sometimes, uh, without agreement, sometimes we are very complacent, right? We think, okay, Indonesia is a big country, 270 million people. Everyone wants to do business with us because it's very lucrative. But there are a lot of rules, regulation that we don't upgrade, you know, by uh, uh, negotiating with our partners, especially at funds economy, we are pushed, you know, to do reform domestically. And of course, improving capacity is another thing because there are a lot of um, uh, element or chapter in the trade agreement that includes economic cooperation. Uh, why I say this, uh, as you all know, usually in the advanced economy, the tar tariff is not a problem. It's zero or very low, but non-tariff measures, non-tariff uh, um, barriers are, are very high. How do you comply with that? You know, uh, of course, it's, it's in compliance WTO, but you can uh, have it higher as long as in accordance, right? This is where the capacity building uh, come to place, and we want to catch up. We want to be able to enjoy the commitment under trade agreements, but to push our SME, for example, small, medium enterprise to be part of it. Uh, lastly, of course, uh, this is uh, investing in relationship. This is what we do. That's why we have, uh, our agenda is very busy actually for the past five years. Next, please. Okay, these are the agenda that we have. Uh, we have uh, 16 FTAs that we are negotiating, uh, implementing and negotiating at the moment, be it at bilateral level or uh, regional level. Uh, the, the first part is uh, um, um, uh, bilateral. We have with Japan, we have with Pakistan, Chile, Mozambique in, in Africa, uh, and then Australia, Korea, uh, and then uh, EFTA countries, uh, non-EU countries in Europe, and then with Palestine. And then below, that are all ASEAN-driven uh, negotiation that we have. Some of them still ongoing. Uh, uh, many of them already concluded and now uh, under ratification. 
it involves around 24 countries, you know. Uh, but our president is not happy still. Uh, he wanted us to do more negotiation with other countries. Uh, the cons in terms of consumer, the rich, uh, the, the market um, opportunity, uh, this agreement uh, uh, reached out 3.6 billion consumers. Why? Because China is there, India is there. So that's why we would like to have a better market access through this agreement. Uh, and then in terms of GDP per capita, 26, almost 27 billion uh, uh, GDP that we are uh, reaching out through our uh, trade agreement. Next, please. Okay. Uh, this slide is the uh, uh, um, uh, slide uh, explaining about our current negotiation before it was uh, already uh, concluded. Now it's current and future negotiation. Uh, quite busy. We have eight negotiation, bilateral negotiation at the moment and 15 that uh, I, my office, uh, my ministry is working on uh, to engage with uh, other countries. And we would love to see one day uh, Ecuador to be to be there. At the moment, we, are, uh, we, we discuss about it. We mention it during our working group on trade investment. We are going uh, to have study, uh, but one day when we're ready, we, we should engage in a trade agreement. But the big one that we have at the moment, I must say and highlight is Indonesia, uh, EU, CEPA. This is the most uh, probably um, the most robust, the most ambitious that we have. Many issues that we never had with any countries, with any trading partners in the past that we are talking. For example, uh, state-owned enterprise, uh, about uh, GI, uh, geographical indicator, indication, and then also uh, SOEs, uh, and then uh, government procurement, and many aspects uh, of trade, uh, new trade, uh, e-commerce, and so on and so forth. So we are very excited uh, about that uh, prospect of concluding it, but it is tough. Uh, but nothing is easy, of course, you know, when, when you negotiate. But we, we think uh, that the EU, um, a negotiation with EU will bring our economy uh, more competitive and also tap uh, some of the opportunity that we left behind because other uh, competitors already fill in the EU market. Uh, next, please. However, uh, in terms of relationship, apart from agreement uh, or negotiation, we also have other forum. Uh, this is a forum. It's not a, uh, it's not a, what is it called, legally binding as yet because we're discussing it, uh, for example, and under what we call it, uh, WGTI, Working Group and Trade Investment, which is Ecuador has with us. We have also with other countries. And there's a name, this is just naming, uh, GTC Joint Trade Committee, we call it TIFA with the US and join working group, for example, with other countries or even uh, with India, we call it BTMF, uh, Biennial Trade Ministerial Forum. And also with, with, with New Zealand, we call it Trade Investment Forum. What are these forums? How important is it? For us, it's very important. This is uh, a forum whereby, whereby we can discuss about the issues, the trade issues that two countries has, opportunity that countries uh, can build upon and cooperation that uh, countries uh, would like to have. Um, for example, I think the, 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 some of the speakers just now mentioning, how can we talk about potential in terms of investment, for example. This working group is actually a way and a place for that. Usually uh, the delegation bring official from many ministry and also private sector. So this is a good forum and the build bridge, you know, before uh, we do a trade agreement in the future. Next, please. Next, please. Yeah. Okay. In terms of uh, global trade, yeah, but this is again, uh, I remind you an, an old data, last year data, and I'm sure and I guarantee you this year it will change. Our economy will be. Uh, decreasing. Uh, we already see the prediction from uh, IMF, the World Bank, uh, and other institutions that say because of the uh, slow in demand uh, and also supply, or if supply is still okay, there's no demand, you know. So we, we foresee 
our uh, trade will be affect, uh, will get affected next year but this is uh, last year uh, the size of our trade is around 303 almost 303 billion us dollar in terms of uh, export and import it's almost balanced of course we have a surplus uh, not much uh, we have surplus but that's not our main uh, objective our main objective is to make our economy healthy to make uh, the, the job uh, opening uh, people are um, uh, healthy uh, people are healthy of course and also prosper that's the most important and also we want to narrow the um, the poverty index um, in terms of uh, share to the world if you can see Latin America and the Caribbean are very low still 22 percent of our Indian trade are with Latin America and Caribbean this is why we would like to work more uh, we work uh, diligently, we work actively to change that uh, statistic, to have it more, because in North America, like because of the US, we almost have 10% of our trade are with them. And of course, in East Asia, we have China, we have, um, we have <clears throat> Japan, we have Korea, that's why it's almost half of our trade is actually with, um, with East Asia. Next, please. Uh, in terms of maybe uh, I just skip this uh, because I don't think uh, it make any different much. Uh, next, please. Uh, in terms of what kind of goods that we export to the world, uh, this is to the world. Yeah, a coal, palm oil, petroleum and gas, motor cars and gold. Uh, it is a mix between uh, natural resources and industry. And uh, I would like to highlight about motor cars or automotive. Uh, Indonesia recently, uh, uh, year by year, uh, becoming uh, one of the uh, powerhouse of the world uh, as a, as a um, producer for automotive. We export a lot now. We would like to do more. Uh, now that we have trade agreement with many countries, the market access is better. We would like to export more coal we still uh, have uh, one of the biggest uh, export I know the trend in the world is decreasing now in using coal but uh, the demand is still there uh, especially in developing countries um, uh, palm oil of course this is one of our champion uh, and uh, gold okay talking about gold now the the price is skyrocketing and we do have uh, gold mining uh, one of the biggest in the world uh, in in Papua uh, that we are exporting all over the world in terms of uh, import um, we are importing petroleum and oils uh, and then uh, telephone sets uh, as Indonesian population is active, you know, below 50 years old, uh, they very uh, uh, um, uh, con uh, con they, we consume a lot. And then this telephone set, um, one person sometimes have more than one. You know, uh, that's why billion of dollars we import uh, just for the handset or a smartphone. And then parts. Uh, part for automotive this is correlated with our automotive export we need the part we this is part of a global supply chain with uh, why we import with a lot because our uh, food and beverage uh, uh, industry is uh, uh, a, uh, getting bigger um, and Indonesia is the biggest uh, noodle um, noodle uh, producer in the world now, billions of noodles produced in Indonesia and sent all over the world, noodle and also pasta, of course. That's why we need wheat and we don't produce wheat or we don't plan wheat. That's why a lot of countries in Latin America, actually, we also import. And lastly is uh, gas. Uh, next, please. I think uh, all of us mentioned just now uh, regarding the, the bilateral between between Ecuador and Indonesia. I agree with Ambassador Dini. It is under potential. We should do more. Uh, uh, some of the some of the speaker just now mentioning about what they are that we can work on. Uh, next, please. I want to show. Uh, I think we have the same uh, data. Uh, we export a lot of automotive uh, and some of the, what is it, centrifuge, probably um, 
uh, uh, for industry and then uh, toilet paper, facial tissue and so on because we are one of the biggest uh, producer in the world. Paper and paperboard, again, again, very competitive and palm oil. Import, I think many of the speakers earlier before me uh, talking about cocoa beans, it is really true. Uh, tobacco, um, uh, sacks and bags, interesting. And then cut flowers, uh, this is uh, also uh, opportunity uh, uh, open and uh, co cocoa paste. Uh, next. Uh, However, uh, apart from the statistic and the potential that we have, we do have challenge, right? And some of uh, us actually earlier mentioning the ch challenge. Of, uh, I, I made some lists here. I think trade, uh, sorry, tariff is still a challenge. Uh, many of tariffs uh, to enter um, Ecuador, we believe is still high and we would like it to be lower. But of course, the only way to do it is through trade agreement. Logistic and transportation, uh, I think Pak Diono would, uh, or Kadin would agree with me because again, uh, uh, the, 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 the distance between the two countries are far, but sometimes the distance is not only in kilometers or miles, but sometimes also in the, in the mindset, right? We think, oh, Ecuador is so far away, must be expensive. But uh, the cost of the logistic also or transportation and warehouse is because of the, um, I believe, is, uh, is subject to um, uh, economic, um, uh, if, if we export uh, economic of scale. One, it is fulfilled and I believe this cost can be lowered. And as I said again just now, a mindset, uh, Ambassador Dini or Fabian from time to time saying invest in in, in in Ecuador, but still uh, there are not, not much interest or um, or appetite to do so. Maybe now getting more and more. I think we should we should do do more and promote a lot because I do believe uh, there are a lot of opportunity for uh, Indonesian investor to uh, to invest in Ecuador um, that Ecuador interested in in opening. Um, also, we have, I think, lower uh, supply and demand uh, uh, that uh, uh, among uh, that that uh, as a challenge at the moment, especially now because of the COVID. I think um, I, I also read uh, the the COVID situation in Ecuador and also in Indonesia uh, is at bad is anywhere in the world. Also, we are still struggling in um, overcoming it. And this, if it is go on until next year, um, purchaser power parity, uh, purchasing power parity uh, of the people um, will be uh, declining. People are nervous. They don't want to spend. They only spend for a few things that they think and they want to save. And I think uh, the opportunity also come there. If people don't, don't spend much, what are they not spending on? What are they spending on? This is something that I think you as a private sector that many here in front of me on the screen uh, are thinking like food. I mean, people are never lack of food. They need food. So I think this is the area that we should, we should need to work on. And challenges, uh, bilateral trade forum, as I said, we don't have a trade agreement yet, so we cannot lower the uh, barrier. We do have working group on trade and investment, but still only one time meeting. Uh, next, please. Uh, so we need to activate it. So I, I believe uh, our uh, uh, we established it in 2012, but only uh, we met in 2018, right? Eight, uh, eight years after, thanks to Ibu Dini that pushed us, pushed, pushed the headquarters of Jakarta to do that. We did. I think it was very good first meeting. I must say, I can testify because I was there uh, leading uh, Indonesian delegation. And I think we should activate uh, this forum more and more exactly to discuss about this opportunity, to discuss about what are the challenges that uh, we have, to find solution, to bring our private sector, including small, medium enterprise, how we can do business, you know. So that's why we propose, uh, we hope the second uh, meeting can be done as soon as possible. I think we were discussing about July, but I think it didn't happen now. We hope... Uh, I think the officials are here also, uh, Maria and Ambassador Fabian. We, we hope, uh, and I send a letter, we hope to be able to do it this year. 
maybe in the fall, uh, so we can discuss and and keep the momentum uh, for us to discuss about issues that uh, of interest for the two countries. Next, please. I think I almost done. I don't want to skip my time. Okay, oh, Indonesian uh, Minister of Trade uh, had a study before. Uh, what are the potential product for us to import from Ecuador? This is, of course, is a, a, a study um, done by our researcher. Um, and it shows that animal and animal product are something that in terms of uh, cost and benefit that we really need. Uh, let's think about it, uh, uh, whether uh, Ecuador can uh, fulfill that. Uh, vegetable product, I think you do. You, you are subtropics. You have a lot of uh, vegetables and also horticulture. And this is something that Indonesia needs and also food uh, i think i think uh, there there always room you know to export uh, food or consume food in terms of indonesia i think our studies show that ecuador needs our textile our footwear and wood product this are just a study a uh, very li uh, little very uh, general uh, but they have a lot of uh, others of course but i just want to highlight the three of them for us to think about next Next, please. Okay. Uh, in conclusion, the way forward, how, how can we bring our economy uh, closer? I think, uh, first and foremost, I think uh, the conduct of a working group on trade and investment regularly is very important. As I said before, we can explore more, uh, not only on goods, not only on export, on product, but also services. We never, uh, I think Ambassador Dini earlier mentioned about tourism, yeah, and I'm glad to hear that Indonesian tourists, because, you know, there are a lot of rich people in Indonesia now, more and more. Um, they, they go all over the world. They don't want to go to uh, traditional places. They want to go to get experience. And I think Ecuador is very exotic for us. We don't uh, know much about it. We go and spend a lot of money. Indonesia, Mind you, Indonesians are very uh, generous. They spend a lot of money. If they're happy, they spend a lot of money. I think this services sector is very important to discuss. And how can we even more, not only on tourism, but others also? This is something, including when we talk about logistic. Logistic is services. We need to, to, to have a working group, uh, a forum to discuss about it. Facilitate business to promote, another, uh, to promote each other. I think this is also very important. We should do more. Uh, our embassy, I think from time to time, uh, uh, never mind the, the scale, uh, but it's very important. I think successfully, I want to also second many of us uh, here, uh, comment uh, the enthusiasm, the energy of Ambassador Dini put into the relationship. He's, she's been, she is one of the most active ambassador that Indonesia have. I must, I must say, not because we are friends, but really, Every week, almost, she always have. Uh, she put her energy, her enthusiasm, in 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 promoting the two countries, and I think we should do that, do it more. Um, and one day we will uh, reap the fruit of the investment that we have. And both sides, I think, we. Uh, I, I'd like also Ecuador to promote to Indonesia more, so Indonesian consumer knows about Ecuadorian uh, um, product. Thirdly, of course, uh, this is a pending issues that we, we, we will have to have at the back of our mind one day when we're ready, we should have a trade uh, agreement, regardless how small it is, but it is important to overcome some of the barriers that we have in our trade relations. Lastly, uh, I'd like to talk about economic powerhouse. This is an important concept. Uh, I think many of the speakers just now talking about how great uh, your cocoa, right? Your cocoa industry, one of the best in the world you export to globally. And this is something that we can actually work on. So if I may suggest, you know, I'm not... Uh, uh, um, I'm not a, a business people, uh, I'm from government, but I think the two countries can and need to choose a few sectors that we are focused on. I, and I think COCOA is, uh, in terms of um, um, complementarity index, I think it's very high. We need your COCOA to blend with our COCOA and then uh, our industry domestically can grow and we can export chocolate or other product for our tourism industry, for our uh, food industry and so on and so forth. These are one of uh, a few that I think very, very potential. 
And and lastly, in the working group on investment, uh, I think my uh, uh, um, colleague just now asking about how can we learn about Indonesian experience in increasing um, our rank, right? Uh, we are uh, number 73, 73 now, uh, based on the uh, World Bank is of doing business index, and but our is jump a lot from 111 back five years ago. Uh, but our president is not happy yet. He wants us to be number 40 in the world, to be competitive and to be friendly and and uh, competitive in our uh, business. Uh, we we do a lot, you know. Uh, even um, uh, we have ministry that only taking care of this, how we can bring or improve the rank, you know, every day. What are the bottleneck? Uh, who are responsible? We pinpoint. And even there is one time, um, the meeting was conducted every month to check this. Just to share with you, because I think um, who was that just now uh, asking asking us, Carlos? Yeah, uh, Mr. Carlos uh, asking asking us about how Indonesia did it, and then uh, also with the WEF uh, World Economic Forum rank, we are number fifty out of one one and forty uh, countries in the world. Um, in terms of perception, yeah, uh, how how attractive it is to invest, um, uh, quite high uh, accordingly. But I think this is part of the reform process that our government does to improve uh, day day by day. Uh, although I know at the moment it's very difficult. Our focus is on health now. How can we help the the one that affected by uh, COVID nineteen? I think last year. Uh, do we have um, next next please? Lastly, okay, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, I'm open for question and answer later on, but congratulations again for Ecuador, Indonesia for the 40th uh, anniversary in the diplomatic relationship. Thank you so much, Maria. Time to give you the floor back. Thank you so much. Terima kasih, Bonimade. To conclude and summarize your presentation, the world is facing some challenges at the moment due to the impact of trade war, coronavirus, the protectionism and populism, and the uncertainty of trading system. Indonesia's current policy direction includes the increase of trade and investment for national economic growth, exploring non-traditional markets, and signed trade agreements such as preferential trade agreements to be concluded. Each agreement signed will facilitate business and partnerships. Indonesia has signed around 16 trade agreements with 24 countries, and the president wants to sign more. Indonesian Ministry of Trade sees a great importance to sign trade agreements as a long-term strategy to improve the efficiency of the economy and enhancing competitiveness at the global stage. As of 2019, Indonesia's total trade of goods to the world reflects a total trade balance of $3.6 billion. This is reflected by exports in the automotive sectors coal, palm oil, and imports of telephone sets, petroleum oil, among others. Regarding the bilateral trade between Ecuador and Indonesia, the total trade is $232.5 million as of, two, um, of 2019, which has increased 37% from 2015. Export and import with Ecuador has also increased. The main export products to Ecuador are motor cars, and centrifuge, and the main import products from Ecuador are cocoa beans, cut flowers, and unmanufactured tobacco. Regarding Indonesian bilateral trade negotiations, there are eight ongoing negotiations at the moment, 15 possible negotiations under the exploratory stage. Indonesia-Ecuador bilateral trade now falls under the category to establish joint feasibility studies. The Working Group of Trade and Investment otherwise known as WGTI, is another form of bilateral trade forum to identify trade opportunities and, is, and it is now being worked on between Ecuador and Indonesia. This WGTI has been established by both ministries of trade in 2012 and on December 2018. The first WGTI was held in Quito, Ecuador. We are expecting the second WGTI very soon. Indonesia hopes to increase trade commercial activities with Latin America, especially with Ecuador, by conducting these WGTIs more often, facilitating business to promote one another, establishing more agreements, 
and strengthening the economic powerhouse to increase export, like in cocoa products, for example, and hopefully to improve Indonesia's rank in terms of economic development and invest in power. All this while overcoming the main challenges of tariff, tariff barriers, logistic costs, distance, time difference, language barriers, and the current purchasing power slowdown due to COVID-19 pandemic. Our fourth panelist that I have the pleasure to invite is Mrs. Maria Fernanda Cruz, Director of Asia, Africa, and Oceania from the Ministry of Production, Foreign Trade, Investment, and Fisheries of Ecuador. Thank you, Mrs. Cruz. Thank you very much and good morning, good evening with every, everyone there. Uh, maybe we can share my presentation, please. Um, excelentísima embajadora de la República de Indonesia, señora Tienagiati Locrosu Prijatono. Excelentísimo embajador de la República del Ecuador, señor Fabián Valdivieso. Señor Diono Nujardán, jefe de Comité Permanente para las Américas e Instituciones Económicas e Internacionales. Señor Carlos Aldumbide, director ejecutivo de la Cámara de Comercio de Quito. Señora Made Ayo Martínez, directora de negociaciones bilaterales del Ministerio de Comercio Exterior de Indonesia. Señor Embajador Bolívar Torres, Director de Asia y Oceanía de la Cancillería Ecuatoriana. Señoras y señores, please receive warm greetings from the Ministry of Production, Foreign Trade, Investments and Fisheries and from its highest authority, Mr. Ivan Montaneda Berlu. It is an, a honor for me to share with you tonight in order to commemorate the 40 years of diplomatic relations between Ecuador and Indonesia with the determination that for the coming 40 years, we will continue to work to deepen our friendly relations and strengthen our ties on trade and investment exchange, exchanges be, between both countries. Um, tonight, I have prepared some figures about our bi bilateral trade relations, as well as information on the opening of Ecuadorian for attracting investments uh, from the foreign uh, businessmen. Could you please change the... So let's start with information about our bilateral um, exchange. Could you please change? One more, please. Okay, so in, in 2019, Indonesia was the destination number 12 from Ecuadorian non oil exports to the world and the fifth is destination with the Asian, within the Asian continent. Uh, we have exported uh, one, uh, $174 million. Indonesia also occupied a position number 10 concerning the agriculture and fishery products with a value of $173 million. On the other hand, 12.6% of the total imports of Indonesia in, in 2019 were in agricultural products and fisheries which that is why we consider Indonesia an strategic trading partner or and we give uh, great importance to this country. Despite the fact that logistics is one of the biggest obstacles that bilateral trade with Indonesia and Ecuador can have, and um, we have to take this aspect, or we have to treat and work deep in, uh, with Mr. Mrs. Mave Ayo Martini, as you said, even though that aspect, Ecuador has exported to Indonesia between January 2015 to May 2020, a total of $518 million. Over the past five years, Ecuadorian non-oil exports to Indonesia have increased considerably from $53 million in 2016 to $174 million in 2019 representing an annual average growth rate of 48%. It should be noted that so far in 2020, despite the global economic situation affected by COVID, export to Indonesia have increased by 15% compared to the same period in 2019. Please change, could you change please? Here? Um, and then the next one, please. 
So regarding the type of products, 99% of Ecuadorian non-oil exports to Indonesia between 20, uh, 2016 and 2019 have been agricultural, agricultural products, while 0.8% correspond to manufactured products. Indeed, the Republic of Indonesia has imported, have, have imported uh, 468 million dollars in Ecuadorian products between 2016 and 2019. And of course, as you have mentioned, cocoa is the main non-oil product, product exporter, representing the 94% of non-oil imports from Indonesia. Regarding the products exported in 2020, cocoa is a product with the highest growth in, in absolute terms. However, growth can also be observed in export of flowers and industrial machinery. Concerning the imports, um, now you can go ahead with the next one, with the, the one before, please. Before? Okay, thank you. Regarding Ecuadorian imports from Indonesia in the period of 2015 to 2019, we have reached $371 million, which have an average annual growth rate of 8% for this product, of, of this period, I'm sorry. 8% of the product that Ecuador has imported from Indonesia in the last five years correspond to manufactured product products, while 1.5% while of these are agricultural products. You can go to the next one, please. The products that Ecuador has imported from Indonesia are much more varied than those exported, since the main imported product corresponding to cars only covers 80% of the total non-oil products from Indonesia from the period of the 2016 to 2019. Uh, likewise, the five main products cover 48% of the total imported from Indonesia. For, for this year, 2019, this is a, there is a variation of 53% in, in, in respect to the imports of cars and centrifuges. And in effect, Ecuador continues to increase its import quota from the Asian country. You can go to the next one. Regarding the trade balance with Indonesia, we can see that since 2016, it has been improving from Ecuador going from a deficit of $25 million to a surplus of $76 million. Likewise, a growth of 73% is observed in, the, in this relationship in January to May 2020, with respect to the same periods in 2019. The same period, I'm sorry. As people previously indicated, both exports and imports from Indonesia have increased in value in the last five years, reflecting a greater trade relationship with Indonesia. However, since the growth rate of Ecuadorian exports to Indonesia is higher than the main imports of the last five years, this has implied a continuous improvement in the result of the balance of payments with the Asian country. Now, as you can see, we have, uh, we have done the same exercise that Mrs. Ayo Martini had uh, done uh, concerning the potential products. A match was made of the information from both countries, with obtain, um, which obtained a list of products that Ecuador export to the world, and in turn, Indonesia imports from other destinations. It was also taken into consideration that the growth rate of the products imported by Indonesia is higher than the average growth rate of the total imported, which indicates that there is a greater interest in these products. So we have select in the list, in, in the screen you can see, uh, a list of the main products that maybe Indonesia will be interested in importing from Ecuador in agriculture, fisheries, and manufacturers. So you can go next. So now I'm going to talk about investment and how are the laws and the, the environment to invest in Ecuador. You can go to the next one. In 2017, the attraction of investment was recognized as a state, of, uh, a state policy, and through decrees 252 and 256, um, the strategic committee for the promotion and attraction of investment was created, and the open skies 
and this transport liberation policy was declared in Ecuador. You can go to the next one. Ecuador have uh, carried out several strategies like reviewing and correcting the debt and fiscal deficits, uh, creating a dynamic work for the proactive insertion of Ecuador, Ecuador in the world, creating public policies to promote to improve the improvement and the competitiveness of the productive sectors and programs aimed at improving the competitiveness of productive sectors. You can go to the next one. The new po uh, policy is designed to provide an important role for the private sector and will strengthen the strategy of proving an economic boost to the country to achieve growth, investment, and sustainability job creation in strategic sectors. Ecuador grants national training to foreign investors and guarantee the same degree of protection to national and foreign investments. In addition, the organic law of productive promotion, investment, attraction, employment, generation, and stability and fiscal balance proposes a long-term stability plan, provides legal certainty, and generates incentives to attract new investments from national and to foreign investments. The main objective is to promote, to promote employment, boost production, and the Ecuadorian economy. So in the screen, you can see the benefits you can have if you invest in Ecuador. For foreign investment in Ecuador, our government offers incentives from exemption, I'm sorry, from income tax to eight to 20 years. Zero percent for exemption from taxes for foreign exchange. Return and exemption from value added tax and exemptions from income taxes from the sales of share with reduction from the 35% to the 10%. In addition, we propose new incentives for the special, you can go to the next, one, uh, in the next slide. In addition, we propose new incentives for the special economic development areas with 10 years of exemption, exemption from income taxes and 10 points of reduction of income tax. So finally, with all this background, I would like to invite Indonesian businessmen to analyze these proposals and incentives to come and do business in Ecuador, the land of opportunities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Cruz. Ecuador, a country of opportunities as we have followed in Mrs. Cruz's presentation. The Ministry of Production and Foreign Trade of Ecuador agrees with the Quito Chamber of Commerce on the information of the trade balance and the most important products for export of both countries. Additionally, it shows more detail on the incentives for investment, which are the approval of the organic law of productive promotion, investment attraction, employment generation, and fiscal stability. The executive decree number 252, which declares investment attraction as a state policy. Executive decree number 256, which declares full liberalization of air transport as a national policy, the elimination of income tax eight to 20 years, the elimination of foreign exchange outflow tax to 0%, the VAT refund on social housing projects, the VAT exemption on construction services, the reduction of taxes and profits on sale of shares from 35% to 10% for the special economic development zones, 10 years of income tax exception and 10% discount from the 11th year. I would like to thank all our four panelists who have participated today in this seminar, doing business with Indonesia to help promote the potential cooperation of trade and investment of Indonesia and Ecuador. We have now reached the session of discussion and question and answers. During this session and based on the information from our panelists, we expect to begin a fruitful exchange of opinions to analyze the opportunities and challenges to increase the commercial relationships between Ecuador and Indonesia. We encourage to exchange and share information regarding trade opportunities, as well as business cooperation with potential products of both countries while building networking in several commercial sectors. The first question I have received is the following. This is a question to Ibu Made. 
Indonesia and Chile already signed the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. How is the perception of Indonesian side to improve and to move forward with the other Latin American countries, especially the stimulation to share the experiences of halal process with the entrepreneurs and the export sector? Okay, uh, Ibu Maria, thank you so much for the question uh, directed to me. Uh, in terms of percep perception or expectation or hope, yeah, I think it's quite high. Um, many of our uh, line ministry are looking forward to have a trade agreement with uh, other uh, Latin American countries, but at the moment we are we are only managed to have one with Chile already implemented uh, very good so far, 10 months to go. Um, export is increasing, utilization. You, you see product that previously, pre-agreement, uh, pre it was not that uh, appear on the data. Now, uh, utilization is high and investment also. Uh, there are two, uh, at, uh, there is one at least that I remember, uh, investor from Indonesia now thinking of relocate uh, to Chile to be close to the market and serving the region. Um, that's number one. Secondly, uh, there are, you know, our, our strategy before doing negotiation is usually to see A, the market, market size, of course, who are uh, in those countries uh, ha having uh, a big, big population, basically. Secondly, we check the tariff tariff line. If it is high, there are interests for us. Thirdly, of course, our export, our export to that country and the potential, of course, we export globally, but then we don't export to that country. Something is not right. So we want to uh, rectify that, of course, and then we do study. Uh, so far, uh, we have uh, completed the study with Peru. Uh, but uh, we not launch uh, our negotiation as yet. We wanted to, but I think there is a, 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 a different or divergent in approach. There's a gap in approach. Uh, we wanted to do it uh, one by one, uh, doing it good, good negotiation first, and then later on on surfaces and so on and so on. Um, and then also with uh, Mercosur countries, uh, because, because there are two countries, big countries there, uh, Brazil and Argentina, that yeah. uh, that we are having trade deficit as well, you know. But it's it's as a game, you know. It doesn't matter for us. But the trade deficit because we needed the product. But more we wanted to do negotiation because we see the potential. They have a big uh, big uh, population, uh, and then uh, by exporting more, but importing more, you know. That's that's our strategy. But at the moment, uh, it's still in the preliminary uh, process. Uh, I'm sure Mercosur have internal uh, consideration and now the dynamic also change and plus the COVID situation. Uh, I think we put it on hold at the moment, uh, but we're still communicating. Of course, we're interested with other countries as well. But again, negotiation is not about what Indonesia want or who Indonesia want, but we need other partner as well, right? Takes two to dance. Uh, so uh, we are uh, engaging and then uh, and then inviting. But if there is no appetite as yet, we can wait. Uh, instead, we do like working group on trade investment, for example, including with with Ecuador. Right? This is this is the step that we do. Uh, but having a forum is very important. So I think that's my response to the question earlier. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we hope that with the form of the WGTI, the Working Group of Trade and Investment, uh, could be the first step in Ecuador to later sign more agreements like the one Indonesia has signed with Chile, like the Comprehensive oh, sorry, Economic I, I forget, sorry, Agreement. Sorry to interrupt, Maria. I think I've, I, I uh, forget to mention the halal, mm -hmm. right? Well, halal certification or compliant is not part of the trade negotiation, we don't we don't do that because it's a domestic regulation derived from uh, WTO. Uh, so uh, the, the legitimate uh, uh, in in nature. So uh, what what we need uh, for halal is engagement. I think I think what you do or many Latin America does, like Chile for example, they they have a MOU now, the first one in Latin America MOU. Not many that we have. Why? 
because they actively approach and they need it urgently. And our our official or our um, uh, line uh, uh, unit in charge are willing to discuss and they have a discussion, you know. So, but I think I think because this is new regulation, there are a lot of questions along the way. Uh, but with the engagement, uh, active engagement, it, it, it can take place, and 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 for um, Ecuador uh, can also do, uh, replicate the same approach. I believe. Um, is it an easy process um, to uh, require the new regulation of the halal um, procedure? Mm -hmm. The, the process is is uh, is uh, fixed for there is no discrimination. Whoever wants to do MOU, but this is just MOU first. Yeah, it's not guaranteed. There are steps. So of course the um, the BPJPH, which is the the agency that does the halal certification, have to check whether that trading partner has equivalent to a unit that can be the partner of of BPJPH and it has to be government. Many of the country in the world doesn't have that because uh, many countries in the world doesn't have Ministry of Religion, right? Not everybody. We do yes. have. So we need to find that partner, you know, and this is the difficulty sometimes. Uh, but then in, in terms of Chile, I just want to share, they don't have, right? They have mm -hmm. private. Then government needs to assign a accredited, uh, accredited body Although it's private, it's fine as long as the guarantee is government. Then we can talk. BPJPH cannot talk to, for example, uh, 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 private sector, private sector body that certified that from that country. No, cannot. That's why that's the process is domestic from the uh, from the other end. And then we talk and then exchange of document, legally scrub and everything. And then the 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 process for quote unquote MRA, you know, the 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 what is it called the recognition from mm -hmm. that body in that country that certify the, the product, then we can just accept. But we need to have the same and there is element there based on fatwa and so on and so forth. So uh, if you ask me difficult or not, it's very relative, you know, uh, but now we have a fixed system and it's already applied. So I think other countries can do, but I just want to remind you, um, uh, there are a lot of lists already, you know, on uh, countries that are interested. So one by one, uh, uh, we have to take care of it one by one. And then this is the matter of uh, human resources as well at the end of the day. But I think the key is engagement engagement uh, through the embassy is the easiest usually thank you it's the easiest way okay perfect thank you so much mrs ibu madre um now uh, i would like to ask the following questions to our fellow colleagues from ecuador um how can we find buyers for parts of motorcycles or automobiles like cars trucks and motorcycles in ecuador how can people contact you is there a digital market platform to find buyers in Ecuador? This is the question from Mr. Ryan from Indonesia. I don't know if Maria Fernanda wants to answer or get, uh, you want me to, to answer that question, Maria Fernanda? Um, yes, uh, maybe Sir, Maria Fernanda, yes. The, institution uh, competent for this uh, question because it's concerning imports. So the Chamber of Commerce? Yeah, um, we, we do have uh, in the Chamber of Commerce uh, uh, an e-commerce place, a uh, marketplace called uh, cuandovolvamos.ec. Uh, I can send you via the, the chat uh, in an intern or private chat, I can send you the, the correct information. Uh, yeah, we do have in the in the chamber a lot of uh, associated that uh, can help you uh, buying you the the spare parts from vehicles here in Ecuador and then uh, selling them here in Ecuador or vice versa. In each in in any case, I, I can I can have you um, in I can keep you in in contact with with the associated that related to the spare parts. Uh, uh, sales and, and imports here yes uh, in order to find a digital market uh, platform to find the buyers here in ecuador yeah, i'll send you the the info in the chat 
Yes, so we can send uh, back to the to Mr. Ryan from the company tamrin.co.id. We will do so. Thank you very much for the question and the answer. Um, the next question I have here is uh, also for the Ecuadorian side. Maybe uh, Mrs. Maria Fernanda can help us respond to the question, which says, does Ecuador export any product with added value? Yes, thank you very much for the question. Um, most of our products that we are exporting are raw material um, from agriculture, the agricultural sector. But of course, yes, we do export uh, products with added value. For example, the chocolate. We have so many companies that are exporting chocolate to some uh, different countries, not only uh, in America, but also in Asia. Um, so yes, we do have, uh, if you would like to get some more information uh, about that, you can uh, also contact us or review our web page about uh, exports uh, and you can see the list of, the, of, what, of what we are exporting out to the, you know, to which countries, the destinations that we are exporting those added value products. And maybe Mr. Carlos Altebidi also has uh, some information uh, more specifically about the, the companies that have added value that are uh, registered for the, in the camera, in the chamber. Well, uh, as, uh, as, as you know, uh, mainly in Ecuador, we, we export uh, uh, agricultural processes, uh, some of them in, as, uh, as raw material for other, for other products in, in, in other countries. But uh, we do export, for example, uh, cars to Colombia. Uh, we, we do export uh, a cocoa pasta that we already talked, uh, frozen, frozen vegetables that it, if it could be like uh, uh, established as, as, as raw material, but they do have uh, uh, an industrial process. Uh, so we do have, uh, yeah, a lot of products that, uh, that we export with added value. Okay, thank you so much for the answer. This concludes uh, right now the question and answer section. If you have any other questions related to um, commerce and the trade agreements also, you can also write it down in the Zoom chat. And uh, for now, I would like to invite Mr. Darianto Harsono, Director of American Affairs II of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia to deliver his speech. Welcome, um, Pa Darianto. Muchas gracias, Maria Fernanda. Actually, this is not a speech, but uh, I just want to uh, have some uh, short uh, intervention. That, but uh, first, I would like to convey my, my deep appreciation to uh, Ambassador Dinariati and then also Ambassador uh, Fabian Valdivieso, who jointly uh, and successfully organize uh, this uh, momentum uh, momentous uh, webinar doing business uh, in Indonesia and Ecuador. Okay, uh, my deep appreciation uh, and gratitude also go to all the speakers for their insightful presentation. And then uh, we see that from their presentation, we can see clearly that there are still plenty of rooms for the entrepreneurs from both Indonesia and Ecuador to increase their, uh, their uh, business uh, uh, interactions. And then uh, through the Q&A uh, session, uh, we also see that the enthusiasm uh, from some entrepreneurs to have a uh, they're willing to do business with Ecuador or vice versa. And we hope this process will lead to the concrete uh, business uh, deals in the future. And then uh, I think this webinar is very timely since uh, we are facing a similar situation amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, which are uh, fighting pandemic itself and uh, facing downturn of economic so that I think uh, we should uh, strengthen our bilateral cooperation and uh, so we can explore more cooperation to increase trade and investment volume in the context of economic recovery, including in the sectors of health. 
So uh, in this regard, uh, we from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia uh, stands ready to work hand in hand uh, with all stakeholders from uh, Indonesia and also Ecuador. So we also encourage the business to business uh, contact. Uh, and then in the sense, I would like to inform you that uh, uh, we are uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, in cooperation with the Indonesian uh, Chambers of Commerce, uh, would like to uh, organize a Indonesian and Latin American, the Caribbean Business uh, Forum in 2020. So uh, this event will uh, take place on uh, in the early of November. So we would like to, we will send uh, the detailed information regarding this uh, uh, business forum. So we organize this uh, event virtually due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, let me take uh, this opportunity to invite uh, the Ecuadorian entrepreneurs to participate to this. I think this is uh, my short uh, intervention, uh, Maria. Muchas gracias. Terima kasih, Padarianto. Um, we hope this seminar has allowed you to have an idea of the vast opportunities that exist to increase business between Indonesia and Ecuador, as it will be the very first step to develop further commercial activities between both countries. I would like to invite once again the Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia to Ecuador, Her Excellency Dinariati Chokro Suprihatono, for her closing remarks. So web, this web seminar was held. And also, thank you so much for my dear friend, Ambassador Fabian Vladivieso, who worked together very closely, both, uh, both amb embassies, to make this happen. And from what I heard, I'm really glad that this opportunity makes more clear about all the opportunities and promising things to start the business or investment in a very security base. So I hope that the investors from Indonesia, the investors from Ecuador, the business people from Indonesia, the business people from Ecuador sees many opportunities that can, we can work together. And also I see here there's my dear friend, uh, Eduardo Lopez from Certac Pack, who also does a lot of, uh, what's it called? A lot of work with Indonesia try to invest the technology. And I hope that it will work very well from now on and export many things and work together to improve the bilateral business potential between two countries. And I would like to express my satisfaction that during the web seminar, we are able to present from both parties from the Minister of Trade, from Indonesia, from my friend Ibu Made, and from my friend Maria Fernanda, and from uh, my little, my best friend also, Carlos Saldumide, and also Padiono, to present and explore the potentials of Indonesia and Ecuador on trade and investment, identify potential sectors of bilateral trade, promote a growing and balanced trade, as well as exchange our few to take actions to boost our trade relationships. I see from both sides, we have shown clear all the potentials that we can cover. And I think this is a very good opportunity because business people and uh, the foreign trade uh, ministry are working together and the information is more concrete. So I hope that this is a very good platform for us to move on for us to move on to do the trading and also to uh, work with the working group of trade invest and investment. Because I see that the working group of trade investment second will be held as soon as possible because we are also working to the provincial trade agreement can immediately be realized. So, May I therefore once again express my deep appreciation to your participation 
and also to all our speakers, very interesting speakers, Mr. Carlos Aldubide, and then also Mrs. Maria Fernanda Cruz from the Minister of Trade, and also Ibu Made from our Minister of Trade, a really impressive. I'm really happy with uh, everything that you have uh, present. And also to Pak Dionel Nurjadin and also Pak uh, pa Lukma from, from the halal sector. I think it opens all opportunity that we can find many things to work together. So I expect that the results of this web seminar will not only strengthen government to government cooperation, but will also encourage joint initiatives between our respective chamber of commerce, as well as private business sectors, and also the development of the chamber of commerce of Indonesia and Latin America and Caribbean. I think this is a very good opportunity for us to seek the opportunity to work together. And so once again, on behalf of the Embassy of Republic of Indonesia in Quito, I would like to convey my sincere gratitude to my dear friend, His Excellency, Mr. Fabian Radifieso, Ambassador of Republic of Ecuador to Republic of Indonesia for the ex excellent cooperation in organizing this web seminar. I also wish to express my sincere gratitude to Excellency Ambassador Laura Donoso, Under Secretary of Asia, uh, Oceania Minister of Foreign Affairs, and also Ambassador Bolivar Torres, Director of Asia and Africa, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Human Mobility of Ecuador, and also my dear Bapa Darianto Harsono, Director of American Affairs to Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Republic of Indonesia, for their supporting to this web seminar. Finally, also I look forward to witnessing a growing cooperation in our bilateral trade and years ahead. And also my special thanks for Maria for the very good uh, work as a moderator. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Um, now we'd like to invite His Excellency, Mr. Fabian Valdivieso, Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia to Ecuador to conclude this event with his closing remarks. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Maria Fernanda. Uh, I would like to deeply appreciate the participation of our distinguished speakers, uh, the representative of companies, uh, embassies uh, at this event, and each of you for your contribution. So we can together identify opportunities, challenges, and mutual benefits of our collaboration. Eh, muchas gracias a quienes nos eh, están acompañando hasta esta hora en el Ecuador. Eh, lo avanzado de la hora demuestra la importancia de este seminario y, y, la, y el compromiso que ustedes han tenido con esta iniciativa de las dos embajadas. The pandemic and the problems of international trade must become a challenge and an opportunity to increase our exchange, facilitate trade and investment flows, and above all, above all to offer chances for a better life for our peoples. We know it is not easy, but we have an obligation to try it. The biggest issue in our bilateral trade is concentration. Ecuadorian cocoa, Indonesian automotive and paper represents the largest percentage of our exchange. The effort must focus on facilitate market access and diversifying our exports. Thank you very much. Gracias, Maria Fernanda, por uh, tu papel de moderadora. Lo has hecho excelentemente bien y es uh, una, Gracias, una razón para el éxito de este seminario. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador. Before we conclude the event, we would like to ask you to put your video camera on for a photo session. So put on your big, beautiful smiles as a first step for our